We take you to the Hotel Martinet in Brooklyn, where Bobby Millet and his orchestra are offering a program of dance music. So I'm here to do a tub to shower conversion, which I do quite a few of. This is a very, very standard builder's grade type setup, uh, typical of most houses. And the tub is going to leave, the tile is going to leave. This is builder's grade tile, which is why it says builder's grade type setup. I have a little mold and mildew going at the bottom. I've already mentioned this on a couple other videos I have. Usually when you have mold and mildew, it's because they set the wall board, whatever it happens to be, straight on the edge of the tub. Instead of on the lip of the tub way up here, the tile should actually overlap so that there is nothing touching the edge of the tub and therefore you're not going to get the mold and mildew. Um, so I'm assuming most builders do it the wrong way. They set the wall board on the edge of the tub and it's usually sheetrock. So that's what I anticipate. Um, not a big deal because, as I said, I'm doing the tear out anyway. But there's a lot of people out there that want to kind of do their own thing, DIY type project. So in this video specifically, since I have others where, in fact, I, if you if you go down to my main page, my main channel on YouTube, you will see I have a section devoted to tub to shower conversions. You can watch those videos and get a sense of how this is done. But in this case, um, um, I, I will go through step by step. I can't show the actual process because I'm one person. I don't have a tripod, nor would I take up all of my customers' time trying to videotape every step of the way. But what I can say is if, you're, if this is a DIY type thing for you, um, the tear out phase, these are the tools that you're gonna need. You know, either a cordless drill or a drill by itself. Um, you're going to need channel locks, large size channel lock, channel locks. You're going to need this, which is actually a wrench for getting the bathtub drain out. So it has two different sizes. There are cheaper models like that, that, you know, kind of just has a fork. I would not suggest that those don't work very well. They usually break off um, that part of the tub. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, a pry bar of some sort, um, hammer, and you can use a sawzall, you can use a keyhole blade, or you can use a Dremel, which is what I have started doing. I, sometimes I do a sawzall. And let me explain the reason that you're gonna need these tools. This is a bare minimum to do a tear out of what you'll need. So, you're gonna notice there's a lot of screws where the shower door used to be. That's what the screwdriver is for, the cordless or whatever, you gotta take out all those screws along here. This is the bottom rail that's only caulked to the top of the tub, so that will come out with a little chisel, get off all the caulking, and that will come right out. And of course, you'll need the screwdriver to get out the plate here. Inside of this, there's another screw. So, yeah, the screwdriver flathead, you'll need to take out this overflow cap. And, um, what else? Oh, this actually goes into the tub. Uh, drain area. Whoops. So sometimes what happens, which we have here, usually there's a cross type thing and that cross type thing lines up with this cross type thing, either small or large, and it usually fits right inside of there. And you can turn it and get this cap off. Unfortunately, they've already broke this off. And that's usually, as I said, what that fourth thing will do. You'll stick it down there. It's only two. You'll stick it down there and turn it and it'll break off that section, whereas that won't. So, little conundrum here. Um, really the only way to get this off now is gonna be the inside pipe cutter. I'll have to cut all this plastic part that's part of this drain to get this free, because the tub will never get free if this is still there. Um, and so once this is loose and taken off of here and I do the inside cut, then it will be free and clear of the drainage. Uh, tub spouts are usually in there by virtue of... Uh, uh, this one's different. Usually it just screws in. It screws in, there's a nipple inside of there and it usually screws in. So lefty loosey will get it out. In this case we have we have an Allen wrench that, once that's loose, this tub spout will come out. 
And then as I said before, this cap and those two screws will take out this plate. And shower head comes off easy. Again, lefty loosey to turn this whole thing. Put some channel locks on there that'll come out. Then the rest of it has to come out. The walls have to come out. So when you take out these walls, um, what I normally do is get a small saws out blade and I cut the sheetrock all the way around. Then I can get um, a pry bar or something like that in there and start pulling the walls out, usually in pretty good sections, and then take them out. Once all that's done, the tub will come out after this is taken out. Um, the only difference is, in this case, I have to save this tile, and getting the tub out sometimes is a little difficult because you have you have some floor material plus the tile that you have to avoid um, cracking. And what else? Oh, so again, saws off. I've done in the past, but lately I've done the Dremel tool. Seems to work much easier. It's a little faster, less dust. And I just do the perimeter all the way around. I just cut with the sawzall all the way around. Plus with the sawzall with the Dremel. Plus with the sawzall, you have to be careful. You don't know where your electrical and plumbing stuff is at. I know because I'm on the second floor that all my plumbing comes from the floor up. But sometimes you have it coming from the ceiling down. In which case, if you start cutting through there, you could cut a pipe. So my suggestion is to turn off your water just in case you hit a pipe. Um, this actually works a little better. It's not quite as deep as a sawzall blade would be. Uh, and then I have my flat pry bar to pull out the walls and along with the hammer. And that's it. That's, that's all the tools you need. Uh, start to finish, this should take me roughly an hour. About an hour, maybe an hour and a half tops to get all this out of here down to the studs. And that's it. I will come back when I have made some progress. All right, it's only been 15 minutes maybe. I have taken out all the rail. The rail that's on here, as I said, is screwed on. This is caulked on. So you just take that out the best you can. The rails are gone. The discussion is gone. I don't like calling it e-scussion because it sounds like it's techy and it's not. It's a scussion. So, um, as I said, there's an Allen wrench, uh, which this gets loose from. Couple of screws on the overflow cap, that's gone. Um, I usually knock out the soap dish and towel bar holders just because they're bulky, so I knock those out as well, almost always. Um, and then I did an inside cut on this pipe, you can't see it. Mm, inside pipe cutter, looks like a cowboy spur, goes on a drill. And you go down to where the plastic is in there and you just do a circular type of cut, make sure you get a good bite that will free up that drain since this uh, top part is broke. This is the only way to kind of get it loose. Otherwise, when you pull up the tub, you're gonna break off all your pipe and have to make a lot of extra repair, um, which does happen sometimes. Anyway, the other thing I did is I took my uh, Dremel tool and I cut around the perimeter of the tile. So that was pretty quick and easy, as you see. Um, right at the edge of the sheetrock and the tile is where I do the cut. The next step, when I'm doing my Dremel, I hit these studs so I know where my studs are and I mark where they're at and then I can get my pry bar inside behind that stud and push out um, so that I have some, some backup um, by virtue of that stud when I start pulling out the wall. On larger walls and maybe on this one, I also take like a two pound sledge uh, if I have help, I'll try and get out the whole wall in one, one piece. This I do in half because it's a longer wall. And then usually one piece over here it doesn't work that way sometimes. But another way to go about it is, is to just start with a little two pound sledge or even a hammer really. You go about the midway point and you just start knocking on the tile. Once you get that section all the way across, then you can pull this off in one section. Another one, three, four. And then I usually try and do this in two sections if I can, or I just divide it up into uh, four separate ones. And then just pull it off the studs, just mark where your studs are at and get your pry bar back there. Comes out pretty easy. As I said, um, so far it's been about 15 minutes. Take about another 15, 20 minutes to get these walls off. 
tub will come out and the demo is done. It's pretty easy. Oh, by the way, one other thing, uh, just so you know, typical construction back in the 90s, 80s, 90s, into the thousands was um, sheetrock on top of sheetrock. These pieces are what's called mud cap. They're, they're different from bullnose. Bullnose would be flat to the wall. Mud cap turns around and, and wraps around a second layer of wallboard, whatever the wallboard happens to be. In this case, it was green board. So this is very normal. You'll have this normal sheetrock and then green board on top of that. Um, to bump out the wall so the mud caps can be used and it looks like you have a thicker wall than you really do Which you kind of do but um, that's very typical and it works as I said this has been around since the 90s and Except for the bottom here. There's really no damage. So anyway, you see where I've marked my little Pencil marks or where the studs are. I don't know why I have so many there in the middle um, So the process begins probably 20 minutes I want to say 20 minutes later I have all the walls down in these sections that I was just telling you about it's relatively easy um, because the tub is not going back I'm not worried about any type of damage I do to the tub so if the tile and the walls happen to drop into the tub it's not a big deal if the garbage gets into the drain it's not a big deal because again this drain is coming out and it's going to get moved over, transition to um, a two inch drain as opposed to the inch and a half that it currently is. So as far as damage to the tub, eh, not worry about it. If you're going to keep your tub, then of course you want to put some cardboard or tape down some uh, drop cloth or something like that so you don't damage uh, the porcelain surface. And speaking of surface, I was mentioning this earlier, almost always builders um, do the tile wrong. The mold and mildew I was telling you about at the beginning uh, weeps up into the wallboard because they set the wallboard, remember this is a tub spout and that's a fixture, so that's set over here and they set the wallboard over the lip and down onto the edge of the tub and then they tile right over that so when water gets up under there and water will get up under there you know the caulking is not a cure-all um, then it just weeps up into the wallboard and then you get this mold and mildew and that mold and mildew transfers through any caulking or anything that you might have at the surface and that's why you have mold and mildew that you're chasing all the time the tile is supposed to overlap this little inch inch and a quarter inch and an eighth area so the wallboard should set like that on top of the lip and then the tile overlaps that onto the edge of the tub so that there's no transfer of any water into your wallboard. Um, so I already knew prior to me taking this out because I saw all the mold and mildew that had built up um, what the issue was. It's always going to be that. So if you're going to do a tub, if you're going to put a tub back, just know, put your wallboard up to the top of the lip here and then overlap your tile no matter what your tile is. Another thing too, uh, the only other thing I was talking about as far as anchoring a tub there's usually a couple of nails that um, hold it or screws. In this case, they were pretty long nails. Um, so the head of, of the nail, half of it's on the lip and half of it's on the wood, and that's another anchoring system they use on tubs. So you just pull those nails out and you're pretty free and clear. And then of course, your tub spout uh, pipe is in the way of getting this out properly. So you'll probably just want to cut that out. And if the valve is in the way, then go ahead and cut out the supply lines, turn the water off first, you know, cut out the supply lines and put some shark bites on it um, and you'll be able to get the tub out. I usually pull it out from this direction up and then I can move it once it gets up a certain height, I can move it and kind of cock it up so it's, it's sideways like this, um, vertical as it were. 
and it's you know not much more to it than that uh, easy process that takes me I think this if I hadn't been videotaping it probably take me uh, 45 minutes to an hour to do this tear out might take you longer but that is the process there you go in our world here to live a happy little mountain <laughs> Maybe in our world here to live a happy little mountain.